You know, if you're a person of a certain age, like me in the late uh, in your late 50s, something really stands out about your teen years in the 1980s. Huey Lewis and the News started getting a lot more prominence in this band as well, and there was a there was a kind of a argument among the kids I went to high school who was going to last the longest. Now Huey Lewis uh, obviously <coughs> had the longevity and the hits, and this band was just as good. They're coming up to her 50th anniversary in 2000. Uh, uh, 26 and it's hard to believe it's all pretty well based on one song it's a classic that everybody can hum again at a younger age of 30 you wouldn't have heard this but Jeopardy uh, and it's parody by Weird Al Yankovic A Loss on Jeopardy is part is an MTV staple now the Greg Kinn band uh, f- uh, started by frontman Greg Kinn and ba- uh, bass player Steve Wright the most successful singles included the breakup song the don't him like that, write him like that anymore Number 15 on the Billboard uh, Hot 100 and Jeopardy, which went to number two and number one to Dan's charts. The band's musical style and genres comprise rock, pop rock, and power pop. Now, Ken began his career as a singer-songwriter in his hometown of Baltimore. He started writing songs and playing coffee houses while still in high school uh, in the city. When he was 17, his mother submitted a tape of one of his original songs to the town contest of local Top 40 radio station WCAO in which he took first prize and won a typewriter, a stack of records, and a Vox electric guitar. He moved to San Fran in 72 and worked painting housings, houses, doing some busking and working behind the counter at a Berkeley record store with future bandmate and earthquake keyboarders Gary Phillips. The following year, he signed to Matthew King Coffson Berserkly Records, along with Johnson Richmond, of course, and the Modern Lovers, Earthquake and uh, Ruby Nose, Ken helped to develop the label sound. In 76, after his debut on the compilation album, Berserkly, Chart Busters Volume 1, he formed the Greg Kinn Band with Steve Wright on bass. Wright became the most influential member of the Greg Kinn Band, co-writing Kinn songs. Kinn recorded his first album, Greg King, Kinn, with his own band, now named the Greg Kinn Band, consisting, consisting of Wright, Robbie Dunbar on guitar, and Larry Lynch on drums. Dunbar, already a member of Earthquake, was replaced by Dave Carpenter in time to record her second album, Greg Kinn Again. The lineup of Kinn, Wright, Lynch, and uh, uh, Carpenter lasts until 82, tra- changing the quintet in 81 with addition of Phillips. Guitarist Greg Douglas replaced uh, Carpenter before the band's 83 Conspiracy album, and that is considered a classic. Now, throughout the 70s, Kinn released an album each year and began better known during promotional touring, become uh, Berserkly's biggest seller. In 81, Ken earned a top 20 single, the breakup song, the You Don't Write Him Like That Anymore, from the Rock Ken Roll album. Now, Ken continued a more commercial vein through the 80s with a series of pun film albums, including uh, Continued, Conspiracy, Contagious, and Sins and Ken. His second successful single, again, big hit on MTV and a great video, by the way, was 83's Jeopardy, rising to number two from the Conspiracy album. Jeopardy was spoofed by Weird Al Yankovic as I Lost on Jeopardy, which I think was his highest charted uh, song at the time. Uh, this came out on Weird Al Yankovic and CD. Ken made a cameo appearance in the music video. In 83, the groundbreaking Jeopardy video became an uh, MTV favorite, and you couldn't turn on the program without seeing it every couple of hours. Now, 85, Ken broke with Berserkly Records and signed with EMI. Matthew Kaufman continued to produce Ken's albums, Lucky in 85 broke the top 30, and a video sequel was made to the original Jeopardy video. In 86, Joe Satriani replaced Greg Douglas on lead guitar, Tyler Ng replaced Larry Lynch on drums, and Pat Mosca replaced Gary Phillips on keyboards. This is a lineup that went in the studio to record the 86 album Love and Rock and Roll. Satriani left the band to pursue his solo career in 87 and was replaced by former Eddie Money lead guitarist Jimmy Lyon. Greg Kinn returned to Baltimore to record a pair of of solo acoustic albums at the studios of his uh, friend Jack Harriman for Clean Cuts Records, Mutiny 94 and Horror Show 96. Now the band continues to play with a line consisting of Greg's son Rye on lead guitar, Dave Danza from Eddie Money on drums, Dave Med from The Tubes on keyboards, and Robert Berry from Hush on bass. Every year, K Fox holds a concert at the Shoreline Amphitheater in Mountain View, California, called the uh, Kinsert, featuring the band. The concert has always featured Greg Ken as a show opener and sometimes MC, along with other K Fox FM air personalities. In addition to the Kin- concert, 
Greg Kinn performs private public charity, a KFOX FM sponsored or promoted events and does a great uh, job at it. And as it stands right now, uh, Kinn is the last remaining uh, member of the uh, of the band. And again, his son joined in uh, 96, the present day. Now, former members, again, uh, Robbie Dunbar, Steve Wright, Larry Lynch, Dave Carpenter, Gary Phillips, Greg Douglas, Tyler Tyleroring, Dennis Murphy, Pat Mosca, Joel Satriani, and Jimmy Lyon. Now, uh, the, the biggest charity hits, of course, Conspiracy when the Billboard Top 15 in the States and uh, the previous albums Rock and Roll and continued hit uh, Top 30, uh, excuse me, 35. Now, chart singles, uh, U.S. Top 100, the breakup song, again, was the number one uh, uh, hit for them until uh, Jeopardy, and he never charted the top 40 ever again. And, of course, the U.K., the only single to get the uh, top 70 was uh, Jeopardy. Now, again, the music videos include uh, the breakup song, Happy Man, Jeopardy, Tear That City Down, Reunited, Luckies, Lucky, Boys Won't Leave the Girls Alone, and Love and Rock and Roll with Joe Dea uh, directing uh, the majority of those including the the classic Jeopardy, check it out. So, I mean, uh, not to call them a party band, but like I said, they were kind of like that Rick Springfield, nice-looking guys on stage type of band, which was pretty prominent at the time. I I think they were a little bit underrated and a little bit overrated, if that makes any sense. You never saw any interviews with them and on, on the, any of the major uh, TV shows, but when they were interviewed at MTV, and I think they did some interviews with Much Music, they were very cerebral and a very uh, personable band. And Greg Pekin uh, wasn't hard to look uh, look at. He had kind of a passing resemblance to like a, like an underfed Gary Shandling, of all people. Like I said, he was a handsome guy. But you got to understand, you had Tommy Tutone, you had Rick Springfield, you had, uh, uh, you know, Huey Lewis in the News. But Huey Lewis in the News, it was more like uh, power rock and... Uh, it just seemed a great kid band was like, they felt like an opening band of a bigger artist. They weren't a, like, they called that in wrestling a mid-carder. Greg Kin was a mid-carder. Nobody was talking about the great kid band as much as Huey Lewis when I was growing up. But we like great kid's music. That Jeopardy song uh, is just tr- like the uh, like the bridge. Da, 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 da. You know, it, it had aspects of getting a power pop. And at one point, it was getting a, the Kin Band was getting a big play in Canada because some of the radio stations thought he was Canadian. He sings with kind of a kind of a Canadian accent, uh, like you know, mid Ontario. So again, so that's the story of one of my favorite bands, the Great Kin Band. And if you like Jeopardy, if you like uh, their songs, let us know with a like, comment, subscribe, or share. Music you can dance to, and movie music you can break up to the main different uh, the two main categories. Thanks for listening. Bye.